What's going on guys? This is Anton or as you might know me from my gamer tag pick 6 which to be honest with you still feels really weird to be called by a gamer tag. Haven't gotten used to it and I've been posting videos or so for like a year now. Still haven't gotten used to it. Anyway, today this is one of my favorite vehicles in Battlefield. It's the anti-air. It's only available in it's in this map in Rush. Uh, North Shark Canals, and then it's available, and I believe it's Wake Island in uh, the Back to Karkin maps. Uh, so I don't think it's in enough maps. I wish it was in more, but oh well. We'll take it as it comes. This match here, I go 62 and 4. I screw up a few different times by letting this thing get destroyed uh, because I went against my own cardinal rules when using machinery. I didn't pick the engineer class. So, either way, we ended up winning it though. And I was a huge part of it because I obliterated everyone with this thing. 62 and 4. Anyway, I wanted to cover a few different things before I get onto my actual topic today. And the first one is that the next few weeks, because of exams and school coming up, uh, my upload schedule will be a bit slower. Maybe one a week. Maybe, maybe even less if I don't get the chance to go out um, on Monday and Tuesday because that's when my exams are. Um... And then after that, though, after that two weeks, everything should be picked up back to the regular one to two videos a week schedule. Um, for the most part, though, you can expect, if you've been playing online with me lately, because I played with subscribers for the first time a couple weeks or a couple days ago, and that was a blast. Hope you, you hope y'all out there that play with me had fun, too. That was, was quite the day. Well, it was like four hours, but it was still a lot of fun. I got some good gameplays out of it, and... I think everyone had fun in it. So yeah. Anyway, don't expect me online much though if you haven't or you want to play with me again uh, for the next couple weeks. That's basically anything I wanted to clear up. Today's topic, which is a long video because it's 62 and 4, but obviously I sped parts up that needed to be sped up to keep the timing down to a pretty decent time. Plus I edited out the boring parts because, well, no one wants to see those. The topic I wanted to talk about today is actually something that's been bugging me for a while. I haven't really had a chance to get the good gameplay or a long gameplay about it to talk about it, but basically it's this one is will be it. It's what camping is and why I think the term is horribly overused by a whole bunch of idiots out there in the community. Like the intelligence level must be staggeringly low or everyone's just afraid to speak their own opinion. I don't know. Uh, let's start off by the definition, shall we? Uh, to me, it's sitting in the corner or a section of a map waiting for people to come to you. And most important to this definition, which I think a ton of those idiots out there forget, it's contributing nothing to your team. That's a key aspect that's very underutilized, very underlooked at by a lot of the idiots. They'll use the term camping, but they won't include that aspect in. And for that, I think it's horribly wrong that they use the term. I find it extremely irritating how many people use the term, overuse it, because to me, everything's camping now, at least from the idiot's perspective. If you aren't running around 100% of the match, it's camping. Did you stop to reload your gun? You just can't. Did you use strategy by staying in one place as the enemy comes to you, especially if you're playing defense? Well, guess what? You're a damn camper. Any, according to the idiots out there who seem to talk the most, camping is when you're standing still at any point in the match. Idiots. To me, I always thought it was sitting in a room, claymoring it, and waiting for people to come to you despite being away from the objective. That's apparently I was wrong. And if you can't tell, I'm being sarcastic because doing all of the above near an objective, I'd actually promote because I believe it's smart strategy and win games. Unless you, of course, are in Call of Duty, because, but Call of Duty is a whole different animal. Like I'll talk about this more as we go, but like sitting in a room, claymoring it, and then just endlessly firing tubes, like in Modern Warfare 2, that is obviously camping. But the overuse of the term to me is ruined Call of Duty, like in general. Uh, like, and for an example, Black Ops and Modern Warfare 3's maps were constructed to eliminate camping. But in fact, because of how small they are, and because of how terrible the respawns are, they actually kind of promote it more. Because, I don't know about you, but I'd like to stay in a building with a back to my wall, 
with, with a wall to my back. <laughs> I like to stay in a room with a wall to my back knowing that because the maps are so shit and the spawns are so terrible that me moving around even when I think the area is clear or I'm not in their spawn some idiot will respawn behind me and kill me. This is why I don't play Modern Warfare 3 anymore. It's it's like you can be attacked from every conceivable angle at any point in time because the spawns are so horribly unpredictable. And this is a direct result of the same stupid idiots out there complaining and saying, oh, well, I'll talk about this more in a minute, but it's basically they'll complain and they'll get things changed when they didn't really need to be changed. That's what pisses me off about this. It's, it's, it seems as if in those games, it's the better connection and the luck of the spawns determines your success. If you have a shit connection, you might as well sell the game because you're not going to be doing too well in it. Or if you do well, you'll be labeled a camper. What what I find really funny about this though, about all the complaining about camping, is that you see tons of videos online where a guy will be sitting in a building and he'll get several kills and he's immediately deemed a camper. When a guy making the video rushes back and gets killed again by the guy that's sitting in the building, He'll complain about how campers ruin the game. What makes me laugh about this is two things, and that's A, him getting killed by the same camper, and I use that term in quotations, a few different times, so how his strategy sucked when going to kill the camper, and two, or B, want, want a simple solution on how to fix this camping issue? Just starve the camper of kills. It's harder to do in Call of Duty, I know. But if you know a guy that's sitting in one area, just don't go there. Wow, it's it's a paradigm shift. If he isn't seeing any action because you anti-camping idiots aren't feeding him kills, he'll be forced to move. Or the game's going to be boring as hell when he finishes 2-0 in a 10-minute match. If he keeps getting feed fed kills by you idiots out there that are anti-campers, what incentive does he have to move? Think about it. Especially in Call of Duty when you're playing for kill streaks. If you're feeding him his 7 0 to go for Harriers, why would he move? You're the idiot for going to him. Needless to say, because the wrong people are complaining, and because the squeaky wheel gets the grease, the entire the entire Call of Duty franchise is an absolute mess to me. As a guy that used to line up at midnight for the latest Call of Duty to come out, I can now say that I'll be renting every single Call of Duty game that comes out from now on. If even that, if the Call of Duty games will be similar to anything like Black Ops or Modern Warfare 3, they will not be getting my money. I pray the last remaining FPS franchise I enjoy being, enjoy playing, <laughs> being the game you see in the background here, Battlefield 3, isn't going to be ruined by these complainers. Battlefield 3 is a strategy game that you win games with teamwork. No kill streaks, teamwork. One person like me can play a huge role in winning a game, absolutely, as you see here. But I've had several 50 kill matches and my team lost because they sucked and they weren't playing the objective. It's a game that requires teamwork to be successful at any level. I also enjoy the fact that there's large maps. A lot of people that come over from Call of Duty seem to complain the most about the maps being too big. And that's why apparently DICE came up with the new... Uh, Close quarters map packs will be coming out soon enough, but I don't know if they're just listening to those idiot Call of Duty complainers. Like, I understand it's successful marketing to market to all of your prospective field, but they I think they're, they're running a big risk here of alienating people that have been following their franchise for a long time by doing that. So, we'll see how that plays out, but I, I just, I hope they aren't listening to the idiots that complain too much. And believe me, I am no Battlefield fanboy. I, as a guy that used to be an exclusive Call of Duty fan player and wouldn't touch Battlefield, trust me, I pledge absolutely no allegiance to any game. If I find it fun, I'll play it and I'll praise it. If I hate it, I'll trash it and say it's garbage. So, before you start calling me a fanboy of anything, listen to what I just said before you make yourself sound stupid. Second, I play this game for fun. And when I shut off my Xbox to do something else, that's where it ends. That's it. That simple. No allegiance. Next, I like to mention how much it pisses me off that game makers and publishers seem to be catering to the rookies and less experienced players out there. It absolutely infuriates me. 
I've been reading about the latest patch in Battlefield 3 where choppers are given flares automatically and how the cannons on jets are now horrifically overpowered so that a split second worth of shooting actually disables or destroys the jets and that scares me a bit because it helps the rookies transition to the game is their excuse. I was always told growing up, correct me if I'm wrong, that if I wanted to get better at something that I should learn about it, learn how it works, and most of all, practice it until I get better at it. I guess that's not how it works anymore, because if you suck at something, don't practice. Complain about it until the inventors of the game, or god forbid a business or educational institution, go ahead and change the rules or how it's constructed to, f to benefit the people that suck. Which to me is a bit of a piss off, because it's like a slap in the face to someone who actually learned how to do and get good at something the hard way, and they go and immediately change the game. On one side, I shouldn't be complaining, because ironically, I'm actually complaining about the complainers. <laughs> so, yeah. May and I guess, looking at it the other way too, making the chopper or jet stronger is only going to make me that much more dominant, kicking the absolute crap out of everyone on the field. But it just makes me nervous that someone nowhere near as good, or anywhere near as experienced, can now get fluke kills on me because they went ahead and changed the game with overpowered updates. Anyway, this is a long rant I've been running to get off my chest for a while. I'm sorry if it seemed a bit angry, but I think it needed to be said. The wrong people are being listened to in the gaming community now. Anti-campers are the idiots that sometimes contribute less to the team than campers, and again I use campers in quotations, by consistently dying instead of using strategy and letting the enemy team come to you. They go out and get consistently mowed down instead of playing defense. If you're an effective rusher, that's fine. Absolutely this doesn't mean anything to you. But if you're the type that goes around and contributes just as little to the objective as true campers out there do, like the guys that sit there and might finish the match 2-0 and in a 10-minute match because they didn't move, then, well, I have a term for you, and campers have campers, I'm just going to call you an idiot. Because if you're contributing just as little to them, like if you finish the match 2-11, and but I'm not a camper, I'm rushing around, I'm clearly doing more for my team, you're just an idiot. <laughs> anyway, if you agree, you disagree, you have any more points to say about it, feel free to leave something in the comments. Feel free to subscribe if you're new if you want to hear me rant about more stuff that is off the top of my chest. I just, I just feel this needed to be said because this is something that's irritated me for the longest time. Um, like, God, I like Al Presidor's videos. I actually find him... It's like he personifies the anger that everyone talks about when, whenever they're yelling about things. So that's why I like watching his videos. But I think him calling everyone campers is just... It's spread to the idiots out there that can't really see that what he's talking about. Like, when he's angry, sure, he'll call people a camper. But he can't genuinely mean that everyone's a camper because they sit there. So... I don't know. I don't know what to say completely about it, but anyway, this match is wrapping up. Uh, they have one more. Sp if they had gotten the MCOM here, they would have had one more, but I don't think they get it. I'm pretty sure we hold them off here. And, yep. Basically, at the start, I didn't have my engineer kit on. I did the smart thing and ended up switching to the engineer kit, and you'll, as you'll see, I get hit by multiple javelins, and I was able to fix it and continue the barrage of bullets because, my god, I love this machine. Anyway, I don't have really much to say because I just did a 14 minute commentary. Uh, I believe this match is like another 2 minutes or so, so enjoy the rest of it and thanks and I'll see you later.
Enemy sniper spotted. Over. Enemy soldier spotted. Over. Enemy sniper spotted. Over. Ah. 